We're going to say a quick prayer together. People have asked me to redo this again, so I'm just going to uh, pray together. So many of us don't have churches, and so many feel alone and isolated. I just want you to be encouraged today that the real church isn't meeting in a building. The real church, you are the real church. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So, Father, we ask you to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, creating us a clean heart and a renewed right spirit within me. We plead the blood of Jesus over our eyes and ears and over the eyes and ears of our family so we can see and hear truth. We ask you to shield us from all forms of mind control that can enter the eye gates and the ear gates. Father, I ask you to apply the blood of Jesus to any doors that I have opened to the enemy that I am unaware of, and I ask you to reveal these doors to me so they can be closed forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Open your Bibles, if you would, to 1 Samuel. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, choosing your battles. Choose your battles. There's so many things going on in the earth today, and there's so many people you could listen to. There's so many things you could read and get discouraged, and there's some things we just have to say no to, right? And to choose your battles, we're going to see here that David had to do it, and that we have to do it. And then I kind of got stuck today a little bit on uh, manipulation, a little more than I wanted to, so we'll see how far we go with that. Because we're being manipulated in every way, shape, and form. And we have to know truth. And that's why we pray, God, show us truth. And the infiltration that's happened in the world, if you, if you can see it, then you are safe because you don't comply with it. But there's some things that are happening on the earth and the treaties they're trying to sign and different things that are happening, they're happening very fast. So we have to keep choosing our battles. And that means we're selective of the problems the arguments and the confrontations that you get involved with. So we need to avoid some controversies. There's some things we need to avoid with our families that just aren't worth it for the long haul. And then there's some things you're going to have to say, yeah, this is worth it. This is something I need to do. So here in 1 Samuel, we'll see an example where in verse 28, as you look there, we know that this is a story of David and Goliath and how the Philistines were trying to uh, make war with Israel. And Eliab, the eldest brother of David's eldest brother, verse 28, when he heard among the men, and Eliab's anger was kindled against David, because David comes and he goes, all right, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? He wanted to come and see what was going on in the battle, and he wanted to be a part of this war. And he said, what did you even come down here for? And with whom has thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? And, and all of a sudden now he goes and he thinks he knows him. And he says, I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart. For thou art come down that thou might see the battle. And David said, what have I now done? Is there not a cause? And verse 30 is the one I want you to see. And he turned from him. He could have gotten a fight could have gotten a battle, he could have gotten an argument, but he turned from him because he focused on something else. And sometimes we have to turn from squabbles, from arguments, family situations, whatever it might be, work situations, and you got to just say, you know what, I'm not going to engage in this because there's a bigger picture. And the bigger picture was his eye was really on the Philistines. And so he turned from his eldest brother and he turned toward another and spake after the same manner. And the people answered him again after the former matter. In other words, he kept saying, isn't there a cause? We need to come against this Philistine and we need to come against uh, these armies. And so he chose to turn away from a smaller battle to focus on the bigger battle. And sometimes we have to do that in our life because there's so much coming through the media, through false infiltrated, controlled oppositions. It's just like, who is speaking truth anymore? And there's so many talking heads and political things going on. It's like, do I believe this? Do I believe that? And we have to anchor ourselves in the Lord again, because some of the things we were anchored in before really weren't of the Lord. They were in churches. They were in movements. They were in people that we thought were telling us the truth. 
And when all that shakes down, we do. We have to go back to the threshing floor and let the Lord sift us. Because everything that's not of him, we want shaken. In every problem that we face in life, it takes up time and energy. And some things just won't matter in the long run. For him to stop and argue with his eldest brother, it wasn't worth it. It would have taken time. It would have taken energy. He didn't feel like defending himself. Some battles will. This is an important battle, and this is something that will matter in the long haul. So we have to choose our battles. So you need to know when to take something further and when to turn away, walk away, let go, and sometimes you just have to move on. Pick your battles. Some things are not worth fighting for. Some people have to be right all the time. They just have to be right. It doesn't matter what it is. And that's, you know, that's something. First, I want us to all judge ourselves first because it's easy to always point out other people's fault, flaws and faults, but do we have to always be right? Some things don't matter. It doesn't matter who's right or wrong. The point is our relationship is more important than this fight. But some people have to, they don't care. They just have to be right. Uh, there was a professional hockey star, and he used to get in a lot of fights during his games. And he stopped when his eight-year-old daughter asked him, how can you score goals when you're always in the penalty box? <laughs> and that's what we have to ask ourselves. How can we live our life if we're always fighting, always arguing, always confronting things? And truth is like precious pearls. And not everybody wants truth. And so you have to decide, well, I'm not going to throw this pearl before a swine because they don't appreciate truth. And some people don't want to know anything about what they can't control. If they can't control something, they don't want to know about it. That's true. Right? And some people are set in their ways, and that's just the way they are. And until they're ready and teachable, why waste your energy? So the penalty box in sports, it's when a player sits to serve time for being called out on as a penalty, or he has to sit because he did something wrong. They also call it the sin bin or the bad box, the cooling off chamber, or the skate of shame. And there's so many times in life we just have to say, it's not worth going into that box. It's not worth picking up this fight. It's not worth challenging someone on something they don't want to know about. And until they're hungry and they want to know, because when you're hungry, you can't get enough truth. But sometimes when you're in pride, you think you know the truth. Yeah. So here we see that David's brothers, they mocked him. And he was focusing not on his brothers, but he focused on the real war, the real battle. And that's, we're being manipulated on every side. It's, it's amazing how we think for some reason, when the church got popular, we were no longer a target. But if you read the Bible, especially the New Covenant, you'll always see it was always a target. Jesus was always confronting Herod, the leaven of Herod, the leaven of the Pharisees, the money changers. He let us know where the real battle was, and it still is. So David, and we're going to have to do the same thing. He turned away, and sometimes you're going to have to do the same thing. Just say, stay in it for another day. Not going to get involved in this today. I'm focusing on the real issues here. Now in Second Chronicles 18, we see here, sometimes we can choose the wrong battles. You can be in battles you shouldn't be in. There are, when your kids get married, they have battles, and sometimes that's not our battle. Right. When you're a mom, you want to be involved with everything, and then when they get married, all of a sudden, especially you have boys, uh, they have a new wife now, <laughs> and the mom is like, uh, yeah, you're not, you're not in the same position. You're no longer the queen. Uh, having two boys, I kind of learned that. So you don't go into the battles they, they don't invite you in. Right. If you're not invited in, stay away because you're going into the wrong battle. And here we see Jehoshaphat. He was asked to join Ahab. Now, Jehoshaphat was a good king, and he was faithful to God, and Ahab was the bad king. He was the king of Israel, and he was influenced by his bad wife, Jezebel. 
So when Ahab asked Jezebel or asked Jehoshaphat to be uh, alongside him in a war, Jehoshaphat should have said no. He should have said no. Here in 2 Chronicles 18, he almost died because he didn't say no. And he almost died because he hooked himself up with the wrong battle that he should have never been in. And here we see the whole story. I'm not going to go through all of it, but here in chapter 18, verse 1, Ahab invited him in. They became friends. They came into a relationship. And then right away, because Ahab was not serving God, he was not serving the Lord, he was obeying Jezebel, and he was under that influence of a controlling, manipulative wife, uh, Jehoshaphat wanted to know what the Lord thought about this battle. So he wanted a prophet that was of God. And we know that Ahab brought in his 400 prophets that just were people pleasing and saying everything that Ahab wanted to hear. But Micaiah was different. He told the truth and he warned him. He said, if you go into battle, Ahab, you're going to die. So what does Ahab do? Ahab tries to deceive the whole battle. He's, he, you could tell he was kind of afraid. He put him in prison, but then he also dressed up like Jehoshaphat and went into battle. Well, what kind of friend is that? He deceived everyone. So here we see they go to war. Ahab dies just like Micaiah said, you're going to die. And Jehoshaphat almost died because he took on a battle he was not supposed to take. And sometimes we give money to people we're not supposed to. I've done that for years. I would give money to people that um, were less fortunate, and I just, but they used you. They don't ever pay you back. Some people I didn't expect them to pay me back, but a thank you would have been nice. <laughs> Some people don't even give you a thank you note if they, <laughs> it, I'm amazed at this, but maybe you weren't supposed to give to that situation. Maybe you were manipulated into giving. So be careful the wars that you involve yourself in, the battles that you go into. They cost you financially. They could cost you your life, hooking up with the wrong people in the wrong time of your life. So Jehoshaphat almost died taking on a fight that wasn't his fight. And we have to be careful we don't take on battles that don't belong to us, right? If you're trying to control others, you're fighting the wrong battle. And it seems like now that we're in the end times, there's spirits that are manifesting in people that are, I mean, they can be one person and then the next thing you know, it's like these spirits are manifesting like never before. And they manipulate. If you have had kids or you have been a kid, you tried to manipulate your parents. You tried to get your way. But some never stop. Some just continually go on. And manipulate means, and you got to watch it, because even what, what we've been through since 2000, uh, 2019, 2020, two weeks to stop the spread has turned into what? Uh, yeah. Manipulation, twisting words, play on your emotions, especially fear, guilt, guilt and shame. That's their, what they do, fear, guilt, and shame. Manage a situation in a sneaky fashion to get what he or she wants. Mind games to confuse you, even with wars. There's so much manipulation in wars. The racket of the whole situation. Uh, talk to some veterans and they'll tell you some of the things that have really went on, which most people do not want to know. They do not have a desire to know. But talk about the United States getting into wars that don't belong to us. Right. <clears throat> Taking on battles that we should never have for whatever reason. Uh, giving money to different countries uh, and not taking care of our own country. This is happening as we speak and has been happening forever, but it's really gotten intense in the last few years. And it's really sad when one of the presidents of that country just bought a $20 million mansion from Prince Charles. Uh, yeah. Wow. And that's one of the countries we're giving money to. Why it's called manipulation, it's man a lot of it is going on. And all addicts, I was talking to someone today about this, all addicts are manipulators to protect their addictions. Weapons manipulators use, and this is Delilah, and we, we see this with Samson, manipulators use 
complaining. And she complained, and she whined, and she vexed his very soul because she wanted to know where his great strength lieth because she wanted the money that they tried to give her if they found, she found out his secret. So she vexed him daily with her words. She pressed him, nagging pressure to get his secret. Some people will just keep nagging, 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 nagging. Well, I got to have my way, so I'm going to keep saying it over and over. I'm going to wear them down to get my way. That's a manipulator. If someone tells you no, and you don't take their no, and you just go around the other way, well, I'm just going to keep nagging, 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 nagging until they give in. I'm going to wear them out. You're a manipulator. Flattery. Faking compliments. Well, I just, I don't really mean it. You know, it's a really nice outfit. Really, you, you don't have a friend or a mirror. But uh, fake compliments. It's manipulating. Lying. False statements. Words not make matching actions is called manipulation. Refusing to be held accountable or, or, or responsible is called gaslighting. We're being gaslit. So many different things, gaslighting. We've done messages on gaslighting. What is that? It distorts your sense of reality. They'll say that didn't happen. You'll confront someone and say, that did not happen. Well, you know it happened, so now you start judging. Well, what's wrong with me? So what happens is they gaslight you so you stop calling out abuse. And it's another way of wearing people down. Two weeks to stop the spread. Uh, gaslighting. All of a sudden now it's, oh, I have to stand. Oh, the whole thing. I just look back and it's just like, don't forget right. what we've been through right. and where it came from. Because now we're seeing nations, governments are going rogue yeah. all over on their people. Then they do smear campaigns to destroy your reputation. And don't think that these governments won't do the same. Smear campaigns to destroy your reputation. It's your fault that I'm sick. It's your fault. It's fear. All this fear. Name, it's manipulation. It's manipulating and it's brain uh, washing, mind control. And that's what you have to pray. Lord, don't let my mind be controlled by the spirit of this world, the flesh and the devil. That's our battle. Name calling. When you get in an argument. And if you resort to just calling somebody, nah, 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 and you call them names, you're a manipulator because you should be able to rationally have an argument without going there because that means you don't have anything upstairs. You should be able to have facts and you should be able to talk. Let's just go into this curse of name calling. I just hate that. Very destructive. Um, they resort to this as their deficit in dealing with conflicts and facts. Sad some of your parents were that way, that they just call you names and put you down. That is abuse. Mm -hmm. Don't pass it on. Triangulation is another form of manipulation. This is where you might confront someone and they bring in a third party, party or they try to get your eyes off of that situation and they bring another person in to triangulate so all of a sudden now there's division. Women are great at this in high school and unfortunately some of these girls have not grown up and they still do it. We had a situation about five years ago. I could not believe the lying and the triangulation that went on in church. But we're not supposed to be ignorant of all these forms of manipulation, and we're also not supposed to use them ourselves. Can we all be manipulative at times? Yes. But the Bible says that we're supposed to try to speak honestly and ha consider other people's needs other than our own. And when they have agendas to pass, pass, they're not concerned about your needs yeah. for your safety or your protection. Right. It's about pushing their agendas. Manipulators do not like the word no. If you ever had a child that couldn't receive the word no, no is not a word they like, so they're going to come at you another way. They are not, they're going to wear you out, wear you down. This is Delilah. She wore them out. They work for you to change your mind. And why is this? Their needs are more important than everyone else's. It's always a one-sided with the manipulator. What can I do? What can I get away with? And they use guilt and shame to control you. 
and they keep your head spinning with lies and fears. I see some of these commercials. I hate ads and commercials. That's why we don't do any of that. Uh, that's kind of another reason why you get pushed down on the po totem pole because they want to make money on you. But the way they want to make money on you and put ads on you are things that we don't believe in. Right. And they're always trying to give you something to make you, you better get this, you better get this, or you're going to die of this, or this, or this, or this. People are living in constant fear and turmoil. And they're constantly being manipulated by their television. <laughs> now manipulators, they play the victim card. They love to be the victim. Uh, <clears throat> I'm just going to share, this is something I found in my files. We want to be a safe person. People who are safe are honest, they're open, they're vulnerable, they're trustworthy, they're loyal, they value people, they value connection, they value intimacy, and they like to be vulnerable. They're accountable and they accept responsibility for who they are, for their actions and their results. Safe people choose to apologize and make amends by also learning from their mistakes and changing their behavior accordingly. Safe people deal with their own issues while still challenging, supporting, encouraging you and your expression and your individuality. Safe people do not believe they're the center of the universe and they are positive influence and part of your life. What is an unsafe person? Now we do not want to be an unsafe person, but we do need to learn how to spot an unsafe, pers an unsafe person. Being in the ministry now for so many years, I look back and I can see people that were not safe, people that were infiltrated into our music ministry, infiltrated, set to attack the pastor or the leaders, someone that was sent in to bring down the church. And we were never taught how to spot these people. We were never ever taught right. We just love everyone, accept everyone. All of a sudden you have this major division and this nobody deals with anything. Nobody knows how to confront. Nobody knows how uh, to have a good relationship. So these are the things we should have learned right off. Ways to spot an unsafe person. Someone who treats you well one day and is hurtful to you the next. Uh, they're narcissistic and afraid of being vulnerable. They act like they have it all together instead of admitting their weaknesses. It's okay to admit you have a weakness. It's okay to admit you have faults. Narcissists can't, and they don't know how to truly love. So to be in a relationship with them, a very arrogant, proud person, it's a one-way street. And they're very defensive. They're defensive instead of being open to feedback. They're very arrogant. Uh, some of these things, I believe, you open your doors to demonic spirits and you have to repent. And that's how the devil leaves. You have to repent. Mm -hmm. Say, Lord, forgive me. I cry out for help. <laughs> because we've all been a little weird growing up. And we've all had situations and circumstances. And we've all opened the doors to wrong things. But we have to learn to shut them. Uh, m manipulative people are unsafe because they'll only apologize instead of actually changing their behavior. Irresponsible and immature, unsafe people avoid working on their problems instead of dealing with and resolving their problems. Some of this I'm not going to go through. The victims, they always blame others instead of taking responsibility. Liars, lie instead of being honest. Afraid of intimacy. Unsafe people avoid closeness instead of connecting. And I just say, if you're one of those people, you're missing a lot. Yeah, you might get connected to the wrong people at times, but still, there's nothing like intimacy and having friends. Um, see, if, kind of going to stop here. Disloyal and gossipers, they gossip instead of keeping our confidences. And there's some people that just have a religious spirit. They're mean. Uh, this one particular person has come to mind. It's a girl got pregnant back at our church and she made a mistake and so I decided I was going to have a bridal shower for her and for this baby. She was totally rejected by her parents and I had to talk to, to her parents and I had there was a lot of work to, to get this person to stay in church rather than just cut them off and say you're just you have to you have to work and love. So I threw the shower 
for this person at another, and I got just reamed by this girl. How dare you throw a shower for this blah, 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 blah person? And I just said, the baby doesn't have anything to do with it. <laughs> this is an innocent baby. And we're here to come alongside this person and to help them. But this person was judgmental about everything. I could just list off, that was just one of the things. No grace, no mercy for anyone. And now I look back at her life. She's 40 some years old, dressing like a harlot, running around doing all this stuff on Facebook. And I'm like, and you're the one that was judging all these other people so mean. And I think maybe now you might need a little grace yourself, right? But that's a religious spirit when everyone has to measure up to you, but you don't give any love, mercy, and compassion back, if that made any sense. And then closing, when battles choose you. Sometimes you don't choose a battle. It just sneaks up on you. It's like, okay, here we go. I uh, didn't ask for this. Don't want to give my energy to this. Don't want to give my money to this. But here I am. So what happened? Jehoshaphat, he was in a wrong battle and almost died. But then all of a sudden now, in chapter 20, he's fighting enemies. The Moabites, the Amorites, and the Edomites, all the ites came after him, and he was in a battle. And sometimes it seems like all the ites are after you. <laughs> you don't choose it, but it's there. Battles will sneak on us. No time to prepare. No time to seek advice or make plans. You're totally caught off guide, guard. Someone dies. Someone gets sick. Some attack happens in your body. There's just so many different things that can happen. And I love the chapter in verse 20 about how Jehoshaphat, he went and sought the Lord. It looked like he was not going to win, but he won because he put God first. And the Lord said, you don't have to even fight in this battle. And he sang out singers, and they ministered unto the Lord. And sometimes we just have to say, Lord, I can't fight this battle. This is too big for me. There's no way I can even win. So what did he do? He put his faith and his confidence in God. And that's what we have to do. There's so many times that the battle is just too big for us in the natural. So don't take on a fight that's not your fight. Don't insert yourself into somebody else's drama. If somebody else is going through something, we don't have to tell a story that outdoes their story. It seems like no matter what, if you tell something, somebody else has to give you a bigger story, and all of a sudden now you're in that drama where you can't stop and listen to what they're going through. Because you can try to put yourself in someone's shoes, but you should listen to their situation first. Because sometimes... I know we can all go, I went through that, I went through it. But they didn't get to finish. They're still trying to tell you what they're going through. So don't put your drama in somebody else's battle. They just need you to be there. They just need you to listen. They just need you to be a friend at that time. We face the same enemies, all these Moabites, Amorites, and Edomites. We face the world, we face the flesh, and we face the devil. 1 John 2.16, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. These are the things that we're dealing with, right? So there's some battles that you just say, you know what, I'm going to be like David. I'm going to turn away. I'm not going to fight with you. I could probably win, but I'm not going to fight. Some people are better at fighting than others, but they just choose not to. David probably could have said a lot of things, you know, but he didn't. He just decided to win that battle and take down the Philistine. Some battles you could win. Sometimes the opponent doesn't even, not even in your class, but you know that, and because of that, you turn away. Don't have time for it. Then there's other battles that you chose the wrong battles. We've all done that too. We've tried to be a part of something that we shouldn't have. We wanted to help someone out we probably shouldn't have. Sometimes God wants this person to learn. We can't rescue people. Oh, I used to be a wonderful rescuer, and it cost me. Sometimes you suffer because you're trying to rescue somebody from something they don't want to be rescued from. You can't fix people. And sometimes we want to fix people, but you can't. And so sometimes we're in battles we shouldn't be in, and then other times there's battles in life which we're all going to face in this world. The Bible says you're going to have trouble. In this world, you're going to have tribulation. So what do we do? We don't unhook from people. We don't go into isolation. We don't get angry and bitter. 
some people you have to wake, walk away from. Some people will, if they're abusing you, and I've had a lot of abuse in my background. Um, my dad used to uh, beat my mom, and he came back from the war, and you know, my dad and mom both got saved at the end of their lives, which is good, but there was this intermediate <coughs> spot that was not too happy. And I would see my dad beat my mom up. He'd come home drunk and beat her up, and she'd sometimes ask for it. She'd get him, you know, on that edge. And so I used to stand in the middle. I'd go down there and just, Dad, if you're going to beat Mom up, you're going to have to come through me. I didn't do that all the time, but there were times nobody else stood up for her. And then there were other times my brothers had to take my dad down because he was beating on my mom. And sometimes in battles you have to get involved because you just have to because you don't want to see the other person hurting. And I've always had a heart for the victim, someone that's abusing somebody, and you can make a difference. So sometimes you do have to stand up for the other person. Sometimes it might not, not be your battle, but it's a, t it's a place and time where you just have to say, I can't let that person suffer when I know that I can step in. You know, this, something happened to me this last week, and I had to step in. It wasn't something I wanted to do, but I just couldn't stand to see somebody else getting abused by this person because nobody else was saying anything. I was like, that's enough, you know? Do you know what I'm saying? Yep. But you don't do that all the time because you're going to get your head chopped off. <laughs> but then there's other times I believe God has you speak up, and that's what you're supposed to do. So what in all this mess? We have to have discernment. We have to walk with him to know when to speak, when not to speak, right? And don't let some abusers off the hook. Sometimes they do need to be confronted and left alone, and they need to be dealt with, right? So, Father, we thank you for the wisdom to know, are we supposed to step in this battle? Is this wisdom? Are we supposed to step back? Are we supposed to turn around? Are we supposed to engage? Are we supposed to help this person out? Or are we supposed to step back? Sometimes we've stepped in and we've made the wrong choices, and other times, you know, we've all just missed it in so many different ways but we get back up again. We repent. But help us, Lord, know that we can be a safe person and help us have other people in our life that are safe. And there's other people that are not that we have to distance ourselves from because they're abusers, they're manipulators, they're liars, they're con artists. And help us know the difference. In Jesus' name. And everyone said? To watch Roberta's messages, you can see her on YouTube at Roberta Morrison. Roberta Morrison 2, the backup channel, Living in His Presence Church on Rumble, Living in His Presence Church on BitChute, and at the livinginhispresence.org website, where you can see all the messages and download them as free audio MP3s. If you would like to contribute to this ministry, go to the main webpage, and on the top right is a Give button. Thank you, and see you next time.